You can worship God and money both. We either, I say this, we either love what we produce or love the source of all production. I have said it like this. Uh, faith is trusting in something greater than yourself. That's what faith is. So in that sense, faith, your faith, my faith, can be placed in anything you find as a source of security. Anything you find yourself secure in, you will eventually worship. And I'm not talking about bowing down, but you will give credence. You will allow that to affect your mentality. You will allow that to affect the way you view the world. This faith can be placed in anything. Faith can be placed in a job. Faith can be placed in a relationship. Faith can be placed in churches and church families. And, and some of you find security within yourself. That's a whole lot of self-security, I guess. But you can even have faith in yourself. But ultimately, God is trying to have us place our security in Him. What we call faith, really, is living in the dimension that God resides in. Amen. And possibilities that we have in our lives are possible to God. I quoted the scripture that if you believe anything is possible. If you have the faith to believe that God can help you overcome in your life, anything is possible. Amen. Impossibilities are possible to God. In God's world, water walking is normal. In His world, seas are parted. That's normal in God's dimension. In his world, sicknesses are healed. People are delivered from depression and oppression. This is the dimension that we call faith. This is the dimension that we call supernatural. Amen. But it's very, very natural to God. So God is trying to get you and I motivated beyond ourselves. There's something beyond what we see, our jobs, amen, anything that you put security in. And it, let's just be real here today, as, as good Americans, amen, we put a lot of faith and trust in what we can produce. We say this is, or at one point, excuse me, we said, well, in God we trust. God is the foundation. Slightly that has changed in our culture. It's what we can produce with our hands. It's what we can produce in our minds. Amen. This has kind of become the little G, the little God amongst us. Amen. It's, it's hard to talk about it. As a matter of fact, Jesus goes on to tell us to watch for greed. Watch out that you're not overcome with greed. Now, Jesus doesn't say watch out that you fall into uh, adultery or fornication or, or alcoholism. The reason being, and you've heard me say it, Greed is a sticky area. It's the gray area of our life when we really don't know when we cross the line. How much is enough? How much is too much? I was reading a story about John Wesley, the, the, the famous preacher, the famous theologian. When John Wesley was in college, he had, he had come to the realization that he could live off of 28 pounds for the rest of his, for, for that time. 28 pounds, Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, discovered this is what I can live off of. For the rest of his life, John Wesley lived off of 28 pounds. Now, John Wesley obviously made more than 28 pounds even in his lifetime. He made uh, hundreds and thousands of pounds. He was a great writer. His books were bought in, in every university and published. <laughs> But he, he realized, this is enough in my life. This is, this is what I need. So the Bible, God is trying to get us to really have faith and really have trust in what He can do and what He can provide and, and Him being on our side. And He uses moments in our lives to inspire us, to get us motivated, to get our faith in action. It does us no good this morning to... Hear a good sermon or however you want to make it out to be. It really does us no good if at the end of the day we walk out and find ourselves falling in the same behavior. Doing the same things. Giving in to what we always give in to. God is trying 
to actively motivate our spirit to encourage us, to let us know that you can do it. You can be an overcomer. The only limits, the only restrictions that are placed are the restrictions that you place in your mind. 